Hey guys, Jason here. Well, today I went and got my truck fixed, uh, got the window repaired. <laughs> right, I had a crack in it uh, uh, when I went to change my uh, windshield wipers. Right, the the spring I didn't think it was that strong. It snapped back and cracked the windshield uh, like a, about a month and a half ago. Right, so I put my, the money away. And I had the 300, I had 300, right, saved. So, but I need. I knew it was gonna be about an extra 100, right? But I didn't have it. But the reason why on Sunday, it kind of got cold. So when I got, or no, Saturday, when I went to dialysis, right? I came home and then uh, on my way home, I heard cracking. So part of the, the glass at the on the very side, I seen it was, it, it cracked. Right, so it, when I kind of shifted the vehicle and all that sort of stuff, it kind of, you know, cracked, and made it made it made it bigger. Then then I then then all of a sudden, then I had one right directly in the middle, right. I'm like, holy smokes! So I thought the the window was going to shatter, <laughs> right. So I uh, contacted people to see if I could get the money here and get it my window fixed on Monday. But it, it kind of you know warmed up. So I got away with it till Tuesday, which is today. So I got it repaired. It came to three hundred sixty-six dollars, right, to replace the the windshield. So, anyways, that's what I did today. So what I wanted to talk about is about, uh, you know, when you, we, I want to talk to you about what's going on here. That I happened to notice some guy, you know, false teacher, right? He was he made a quick short talking about uh, how the. the Israel is uh, slaying and killing and God told him to kill him all this right this is where he got it from right the veggies of Midian I'm sure some of you know what's happening right, right. so and the Lord spoke to Moses saying you know avenge the children of Israel of the Midians right see they're trying because they see you know Israel they, they associate with the biblical Israel you have to understand one thing, okay? This is talking about the Israelites, okay? The Israelites were scattered, okay? They're they're all over the place right now until God gathers them again. So this hasn't come yet. You may see it, like, oh, this is happening in the Bible already. Uh, no. The, everything in the Bible, I keep telling you, is spiritual. Unless you actually were in the past living these events, <laughs> right? Well, then you have no proof. Okay, right? This is why it's quite clear the Bible, you know, I keep showing you, you know, this verse here. This is why it's dangerous for you to assume these things because you're giving, you, it's like the Jews today, right? It's, it's referring to Israelites, but they, they, they think that's the Jews. No, has, did you see the Jews in that chapter? No, that, no they don't know where to be found. The Jews went their own way, right? <laughs> This is actually referring to the spiritual war in heaven, right? Which is, which is coming. Okay, so what people don't uh, think when God's commanding people to go kill these people, it's not what it's talking. It's not what it's talking about. It's a, it's a spiritual war, guys. And this is what you need to understand. So it's not a physical thing. So just because you see. Israel today, you know, going into Palestinians and doing all this, and they're trying to bring it together and tie it up. Oh, it's them. No, it's not. It's the Jews. The Jews are entirely different people. A different type of people from the Israelites. The Israelites, right? What happened to the Israelites? Right? It's like, it's like two different times, two different events, two different, different peoples. But what I wanted to bring you about the, what what makes it spiritual is like God's not commanding people to kill people and all sorts of stuff. It's talking about destroying them with the word of God, the sword of God. Okay, it's like what I was trying to explain to the to some people, right? So I wanted to bring your attention to Matthew ten thirty four. And 1034. Now, I want you to remember I was telling you the name Jason? 
Jason, as in Acts 17, you know, where the name Jason is found, 5, 6, 7, and 9, right? That's where he's mentioned four times. This is the four. But anyways, so if you look at that number, Matthew 10, 34, 3 and 4 is 7. What's 10 plus 7? 10 plus 7, anybody? 17. So this is referring to the sword of God. Okay, so... Alright, so I want you to bring your attention so you guys can understand what's actually happening here. <laughs> you know. Okay, so this is what's going to tell get you to, your mind to get it that it's going to say that it's a spiritual thing. Right? It's not a literal thing. So, this is Jesus speaking in Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Oh my goodness. I can't stand these websites. You know what I mean? Support, support, support. You know, damn beggars. I can't stand these freaking websites, man. You know, it's like trying to hustle for your money. Can't even see the information. They're just stealing God's word and replacing. Oh, boom. You can't watch this page until you pay it. Until you pay me. Like, freaking holding it hostage. Kind of sounds like what Israel's doing to, you know, the Palestinians. Holding them hostage. So, think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So, do you really think Jesus was walking around with a sword? You know, and then slaying people. <laughs> do, do you guys think that really is the case here in this statement? So this is the this is this is what fools do. They're going to go into the Old Testament and they're going to do this and this and this and try and try and you know blind you know blindside you. Okay, this is the difference. This is what it's talking about. Jesus is trying to tell you. He says, "If I tell you heavenly things, how can I tell you? If, or if I tell you earthly things, how could you understand heavenly things?" You know what I mean? That's what I mean. None of you are going to get understand that. If, if, if you've seen it the way it actually is, do you think Jesus is walking around with a sword, cutting people up? <laughs> do you think that was it? No. The sword of God represents God. God's voice, which is the commandments. Okay? And in the power of his word, that is what the sword is, guys. So when, when we're looking in Numbers 31 here, right, this is what it's referring to. You know, take the sword and go slay them, <laughs> which is basically, here, here's the power of God's voice. Go cut them to pieces, right? You know, and overtake them and slay them, right? Which is, you know, a spiritual thing, which is talking about, you know what I mean, the power of God's voice. It's not a literal thing. This is why people are, are, are so confused. That's why you need to, you, you got to understand what Jesus is talking about here. So, and then if you really took it literally, what this is saying, well, then you got to take what Jesus is saying literally, saying that he was rolling around with a sword, cutting people to people's pieces. I don't think that was happening. <laughs> so, you have to understand the difference between spiritual and the physical. And the physical... It doesn't exist because it's a spiritual book. Everything is spiritual here. This is why nobody is going to understand this Bible at all. That's why it's written in Ecclesiastes 3.11, which I keep talking about. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm just like, man, what is wrong with, with what, what is, what is wrong with the, their brains? Do they not know that they're actually, we're in the war in the heavens. This is what's happening. Right? Because of man's lack of understanding. Right? So Ecclesiastes 3.11. I'll keep bringing this up to your attention. Okay, you need to pay attention to this verse here. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Whose time? God's time. Right? Not these fools that are on on YouTube. 
making stuff up that they don't understand, right? Also, he has set the world in their heart, okay? So this is the key thing here. So no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. Okay, so <laughs> that's what I mean. Is is like they take a few verses and then they they manipulate it to fit their narrative, right? They're they're, they're, they're placing the word of God, taking it out, okay, and bring it into the world. You're not supposed to do that. Deuteronomy four two tells you that you if you do that, that's a curse upon you and your household. That's why we see these events happening here. You do not take the word of God from its from its where it's supposed to be okay but always fall back on this verse so then you can know that nobody's gonna know what God knows unless God himself does it that's what it's saying you need to fall back to these uh, these verses that you know it's where you're supposed to keep hiding his shelter under his wings this is what it's talking about guys <laughs> Right? It's telling you, no man's going to know what the work of God. So basically, mind your business, love your neighbor, and keep the commandments. That's all you need to do. <laughs> right? And then, <laughs> see, they don't want to They don't want to learn what Jesus is talking about. Heck with that. Let's, let's forget what Jesus is talking about. <laughs> right? But if, if, if they actually took things literally, Jesus was rolling around with a sword cutting people up. <laughs> this is why you need to believe Jesus guys how many times I gotta tell you before you go into the Old Testament you have to go through Jesus right No. how many times you guys are talked about that but instead you guys you, you have fools on, on YouTube taking things out of the Old, of the, of the old Testament and actually thinking that's real and literal it's not <laughs> right 1034 which is 17 which is act 17 <laughs> or 107 right 107 like I keep telling you look Ten seven. Ten seven. Ten seven. Seven, like I was, like, this is the seven, right? This is the, this is what it's referring to. This is they're getting slayed by, <laughs> right? They're getting slayed by you know the understanding of what humility is, bravery, honesty, wisdom, truth, and respect and love. Okay, because those 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 countries that he's referring to, they're they're right. They're they're, they're going against God. So God comes up with the power of His voice, which is ten seven which is the sword, which is basically this. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual slaying. You're getting slayed by the seven grandfathers or the seven spirits of God, right? <laughs> That's what I said. I, I wish you guys could just, you know, just wait. Cause I can explain this all, this whole Bible, right? <laughs> and then we go to the 10 commandments, 710, right? You see that right there, 710, right? 7, 10, right? That's what it's referring to. The commandments. Where did hmm. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, see? It's the seven here, the seven spirits of God and the ten commandments. Right? This is the sword okay this is the sword this is this is what slays people because since people don't keep the commandments when they see the commandments this is what destroys them <laughs> like right now these Christians are being destroyed because they don't keep the commandments and they don't keep the seven spirits of God and that's what Jesus came to do he didn't come to bring peace this is how foolish the Christians are Jesus came to bring you the commandments and to cut you guys to pieces, cut you down. Right? My goodness. <laughs> Shit. I, Jesus didn't come here to, you know, like like the love of a Care Bear. He came here to kick ass. 
Jeez, man. You guys, you just because you watch your stupid movies. Oh, this is Jesus. He's just a lovely with the with the the white man with the the, the glorious hair. Well, for once, he's not white, right? That's established in Revelation four three. He's the color of a jasper stone. And don't allow the black people to say they're jasper stone. It's Native American, which is a pipe stone, which is the sacred pipe that my ancestors. That's where it came from. You can only find that stone around in Minnesota area. But nobody's going to understand that. So, <laughs> so, this is the fallback verse again. Okay, Ecclesiastes, this is God. Okay, God's telling you, no man's going to know the work of God. Okay, no man. So don't even bother. <laughs> right? And then this is Jesus. And Jesus didn't come to bring peace, as what all Christians assume. Jesus came to kick ass. <laughs> you, you, you remember there was an angel that stood before Balaam, right? That's what this is what this is talking about. Okay? Jesus was that angel. <laughs> Come on guys, you need to get with the program. You need to start putting things together. <laughs> right? But you not so I said you you can't because you guys don't believe Jesus. You don't even know what he's talking about. You think he's a care bear guy and come in here to save and hold hold my hand. And I'm gonna take you guys up to heaven and we're gonna go rock the boat. <laughs> Shit. You guys have a gay Jesus, guys. The Jesus from the Bible, he came here to kick ass. Right? <laughs> and if you understand why he's crying, because he's frustrated at these stupid disciples of his. <laughs> you know? The disciples perpetuating this Messiah Christ bullshit. You have to remember the Jews were the ones that created that nonsense, because in result of, you know, when Moses went into the desert... Moses went into the desert. He was speaking with God. He came down. What were they doing? They were idol worshipping. This is the period that we're in. The Moshiach, the Messiah, the Christ are the golden calves, guys. The idols. Which have been replaced by God. Or no. They replace God with their idol. You know, with the stuff with their hands. <laughs> That's why Jesus came. Jesus did not come here to you know, for the righteous, he came, you know, to the sinners. He came to sinners to kick ass. So when everyone's thinking that they're waiting for Jesus, which Jesus are you talking about? Because nobody knows the Jesus from the Bible. They just know this imaginary Jesus that's from the movies. <laughs> that's what I said. That's why I said. It's like, do you guys even know Jesus? If you guys were thinking in this magnitude, oh, Jesus is rolling around with a sword. <laughs> that sword is God, guys. The commandments, you know, 10-7. It says you right there in the verse there, 10-7. How could you guys not see that and, and put it together? The seven spirits of God, Revelations 4-5, right? And then the Ten Commandments, 10 right there. <laughs> That's why it said... You have to wait for God. God's the one that puts everything in order so you can see it properly. Right? And it makes you think that that, uh, that Jesus was an angel, guys. Who, who makes angels? Because you have to remember, it was the sons of God that came into the daughters of men and took them as wives in Genesis, right? That took place when Mary appeared. The angel came to Mary. Or it could have been, you know, this, uh, you know, because there's angels of darkness. That angel of darkness, I would, like, I assume it was Paul. Anyways, let's find that verse here again. So, so you guys can see what I'm talking about here, right? Um, You're gonna you're gonna understand, right? Now you gotta pay attention. First Corinthians four fifteen. This is Paul's letters from his letters. And the thing about Paul's letters, they're not scripture, guys. Paul's letters are not scripture. They're only his opinions. They were added in. 
And this is what Revelation 22, 18 is referring to. It says, do not add or take away. So they added in Paul's gospel, which is just his letters. They're just worthless. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't even know if they're, ex if they're real. But they're added in. And this is the doctrine of the church, which is the, the, the foundation on the sand. Because they don't keep the commandments. Okay, you're, you're gonna, you're, your eyes are going to be like blown away at this verse. Okay, this is where I assume Jesus' dad, real dad was Saul. As the angel, you know, the, 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 the dark angel, right? That was him who impregnated Mary, right? Who set this whole Christ bullshit up. Because <laughs> you have to remember, Jesus is warning you. He says there's going to be an angel that comes down, right? That angel was the one that impregnated Mary. I've been trying to explain that to you guys. You guys can't see it like that, right? Because who else would promote his own son, as the Christ when Jesus is saying I'm not Christ that's the difference because Jesus obeyed God whether or not that was his son he recognized him as the devil <laughs> he knew that his own dad was a devil because it, what an angel comes like a even angels you know are are, come, are evil too sort of sort of thing right? dark and bad angels right so people don't stink, stop to consider that so for though ye have ten thousands of structures in Christ, yeah, what's happening right now? There's ten thousands of structures in Christ right now on YouTube. <laughs> Yet, have ye not many fathers? For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. He's basically telling you that's that's his son. <laughs> It took me years to, you know, to really come to the understanding of what Paul's saying here. And I did, it didn't, it didn't dawn on me when I thought about, you know, the sons of God came into daughters of men, back in Genesis, right? Which is the same story when the angel came to Mary. Okay. And it all depends on who that angel was. It's not like people were around, all gathered. Well, that's the angel Raphael. They just added it in. As, as I said, it's manipulated already. It's already been corrupted, the Bible. This is why there's a hidden path that not many find. That's God's voice. And that's what no one wants to hear. Jesus is trying to tell you, get back to God's voice. <laughs> but nobody under wants to understand that. And he's telling, he's basically telling you, for you don't have any fathers. But you have, but I've begotten you through the gospel. He's telling you that I'm here, I'm your father. I'm your father, Luke. <laughs> That's what's going on there. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> and then Jesus, no! <laughs> Yeah, because he ran him into the desert. He actually knew who he was. Right? Because Jesus already knew that there's only one God. And that's who you worship because he tells you that. And then here Paul's telling him, uh, I'll give you the title Christ. And then you can bow down and worship me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he recognizes him says, No, be gone, Satan. <laughs> It's like a it's like a family feud is what I see it how I see it as because Saul is King Herod's foster brother. Okay? I think that's in Acts 13:1 or 13:9. Okay? And it's only written in the 1611 King James. That's why they remember when they created the 1611, they translated and they took a lot of stuff out. Yeah, so anyways, I thought I'd bring that up to your attention that uh, be, be careful with these false teachers because they don't know what they're talking about. This is why only God is the one that shows you what's actually happening, how things go down. 
The first thing you need to understand when it's the Bible is when you understand those two verses. These are your these are your go to verses. So if you're looking in the Old Testament and you, and you're seeing and it's not making sense to you, go back to Ecclesiastes three eleven, and that's going to tell you that God's the one that will understand this. So don't bother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then if you if you're not still not sure, go back to Jesus, and then you then you go back to Jesus and you'll say that well, you think Jesus is walking around with a sword? Then you begin to realize it's a spiritual sword, which is God's voice. And if you look at the numbers, 1034, 7, which is the seven spirits of God, right? And the 10 are the 10 commandments. This is what he slew them by, by the sword, which is God's commands. <laughs> right? That's what it talks about then. The Lord spoke. What do you think he, God, the Lord was speaking? His commandments. <laughs> right? That's what they are. That's the sword. That's the double-edged sword. So when it talks about go slay and kill all these people, you know what I mean? That's talking about what the commandments because they're disobeying the commandments. And they're they're being rebellious children. That's what I've been doing. People don't understand that, you know, I've been, you know, going and, and showing them what the word of it is. They can't stand it, so they're being slayed. And they don't even realize it. Because they denied God and Jesus. So anyways, I thought I'd bring that to your attention so that way it just troubles me to know that there's stupid idiots out there on, on YouTube land deceiving the masses, right? And when that when the, it's talking about the Midianites and the Israel, that has nothing to do with the Jews. It has nothing to do with these events today. It's an entirely different area, a different time. So that's why Jesus told you in Luke chapter 9 verses 6-2, right? Don't go back in the past. For yours is not the kingdom of God. Right? But that's what they do. They go into the past, not knowing what they're... They, they have no experience or nothing. No knowledge. For my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. <laughs> right? Because they didn't keep the, the law of God. You know, if you don't have the law of God, well, what, where's your sword? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to shed some light, some understanding. But when <laughs> when they start re actually taking the Bible literally, and then you and you, what, you hear what Jesus is talking about, Jesus was rolling around with a sword? <laughs> what was Jesus rolling around with a sword? <laughs> that sword is the God's commandments. Right? It's the seven spirits of God. Ten seven. Right? That's why... Jason exists in Acts 17. So anyways, I appreciate you all. Uh, love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, and soul. I didn't come to take away the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.